Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you my bloodied gorilla build here on Fallout 76. Let's get into it. Okay, so first up let's talk about the special stats and perks, legendary perks, that sort of thing. So this build runs 8 points in strength, 9 points in perception, 9 points in endurance, 7 points in charisma, 8 points in intelligence, 15 points in agility, 15 points in luck. Now you may notice that my special stats are quite high and they're above the normal base points that you're normally allowed i do run the legendary endurance card at max rank i run the legendary intelligence card at max rank and the legendary luck card at max rank okay so just bear that in mind if you're building this build out for yourself so um strength we run rank two a bandolier so that means our ballistic ammo weighs 90 percent less uh being a gunslinger build you use a lot of ammo so uh having this weight reduction card really really matters okay i run three points in barbarian meaning every point of strength adds plus four damage resistance uh maximum of 80 no power armor just a little bit of extra damage resistance for a little bit more survivability i run rank three in blocker meaning i take 45 percent less damage from your opponent's melee attacks just in case we get mobbed by some enemies and you know we get a few hits from them uh moving on to perception i'll run rank one in glow sight meaning we deal 20% extra damage to glowing enemies. It's just a little bit of extra damage to those glowing enemies when we come across them. Uh, I run rank 2 in Grenadier, meaning our explosives detonate with twice the radius. This does affect your explosive weapons, and I use explosive weapons on this build, so that's why I run that. I run rank 3 in Concentrated Fire, meaning that I can target individual body parts, always aiming for them headshots. And with each fire that you make, you increase your percentage hit chance, and also you do a little bit more damage each time you pull the trigger. I run rank 3 in tank killer, meaning uh, rifles and pistols ignore 30%, sit, sorry, 36% of your target's armor, and they also have a 9% chance to stagger. This perk is awesome for pistol builds, so uh, you definitely want to get that in there. Moving into endurance, I run rank 3 in chem fiend, so any chems I take last 100 percent longer so overdrive psycho tats anything like that meaning you get double the life of them i run rank three and fireproof uh, meaning we take 45 percent less damage from explosions and flame attacks the only reason why i use this really is because i use explosive weapons and i don't want to kill myself with my own explosives run rank one in radical this is a great perk for any bloody build because it adds five strength for just one point there is no other card in the game that will give you that kind of extra carry weight and things for just one perk point so it's a must for a bloody build and then i'll run rejuvenated meaning we gain even better benefits of being fully fed or fully hydrated okay so this is quite easy to manage there's a load of food buffs in this game water is everywhere and you have perfect bubble gum to sustain your food and uh, thirst meters Moving into Inspirational, so when you're on a team, gain 15% more XP, so I'll run this at rank 3, it's just a little bit more XP, that's all it's for. Stranger Numbers, meaning our positive mutation effects are 25% stronger if teammates are mutated too, so you should always run as part of a team, even if you're solo, join a public team, because you get benefits from being on a team, even if you're on your own. Um, everyone runs mutations in this game, so there is no downside to using this perk. And then I'll run rank 3 in Tenderizer. Make your targets receive 10% more damage for 10 seconds after you attack. So, again, just some more damage, guys. Moving into Intelligence, I'll run rank 3 in Nerd Rage. So while you blow 20% health, you gain 40 damage resistance, 20% more damage, and 15% AP regen. Of course, this is a bloody build. We are always below 20% health, so that extra damage, uh, the bonuses from our own yielding armor, all that sort of thing, they all start to tie in and make the build what it is. And then I run rank five in Demo Expert purely because I use explosive weapons. So if you're not planning on using explosive weapons in your build, you can quite easily swap this out for say Gunsmith, or you could even remove the points altogether from Intelligence and distribute them elsewhere in the build as you see fit. Okay, moving on to Agility. Now Agility is a stat with a pistol build that really suffers because you have a lot of perks in the agility tree that can uh, that you can use as part of a pistol build but because the pistol perks are in there you can't use them so you have to make sacrifices for me the pistol perks they should be in the perception tree but they're in agility for some reason and so we have to make do so i run 
just one rank in each of the gorilla perks because I use automatic 10 mil pistols so it just makes sense to obviously use the gorilla perks there for automatic pistols and each rank of this uh, sorry each perk card does 10% more damage so we gain an extra 30% damage there I run one ranking gun foo so this allows you to swap targets with each kill so the game will automatically move you to the next available target that you can see and it will also keep targeted on the body part that you were targeted on the previous enemy so if you killed an enemy with a headshot it will move you to the next enemy and it will instantly target with a headshot and you gain more damage with each kill so it becomes really really good so you can you can sort of stack damage and then if you're fighting like say the scorch beast queen or earl or something like that you can stack damage with each of the small enemies and then gradually switch to you know the main enemy like the queen or earl or whatever and you can get maximum damage that way i run escape artists so sneak to lose enemies and running no longer affects stealth there are a lot of perks that i would like to put in the agility tree that i just can't get in so escape artist is just one of those if you get detected you're able to sort of get out of that detected uh, state and back into sneak a little quicker uh, I'll run two points in action boy meaning my action points regenerate 30% faster um, my pistol builds uh, well, sorry my pistol weapons use quite a lot of AP so you know that AP drains quite quickly so having it being able to regenerate that much faster is a huge benefit I run rank 3 in covert operative so your range sneak attacks do an additional 50% more sneak attack damage Hugely beneficial perk for this build. Hugely beneficial. Having that extra 50% sneak attack damage is huge. So I highly recommend running uh, Covert Operative. And then I'll run rank 5 in Adrenaline. So this gains you 10% more damage to a maximum of 60% for 30 seconds per kill. And the duration refreshes with kills. So what this means is if you kill an enemy, you've got 30 seconds to kill the next enemy. And then that damage stacks with each kill. So if you kill an enemy and then you kill another enemy within 30 seconds, your damage goes up. And then you kill another enemy with 30, within 30 seconds, your damage goes up again. So hugely, hugely, uh, hugely important. Right, I just need to swap something out here because that's wrong. And right, so moving into luck, I run one rank in quick hands. So we gain a 6% chance to instantly reload when your clip is empty. Okay, so because I use majority of my pistols are bloodied they have a very small magazine so just having that little percentage chance that you can instantly reload your clip is can be good it can save you it can save you you run two points in starch genes everyone runs starch genes because well it you run mutations in this game and starch genes prevents further mutations from being inflicted upon you and also it stops your mutations from going away so it's an absolute must I run rank 3 in better criticals, meaning your VAX criticals now do 100% more damage. Um, I spam the life out of criticals, and you'll notice in my gameplay that that's what I do. So, you know, why not have more damage with your criticals? I run rank 3 in bloody mess, meaning 50% more bonus damage, and enemies may explode into a gory red paste. The bonus damage is obviously awesome, and exploding enemies is just good fun. I run rank 3 in critical savvy, so critical hits now only consume 50, 55% of your critical meter, which means that obviously you can get off more critical hits. If you're only consuming 55% of your critical meter, chances are you only need another shot or two to get your critical meter back full again, and then you've got another critical ready to go. And then I run rank 3 in Grim Reaper Sprint, so any kill in VATS has a 35% chance to restore all action points. So like I said before, we use a lot of AP with this build. So having that extra chance to instantly refill all your action points is huge. Let's go and take a look at the legendary perks. So like I said before, guys, I run max rank in endurance, max rank in, in intelligence, and max rank in luck. So that allows me to get in all those perk cards that you saw a little earlier. I run max rank in far-flung fireworks. Now this is a card that is sort of divided opinion because... Uh, you know enemies explode they go flying all over the place people can't find them that sort of thing but now with the area looting and that sort of thing it's made this perk much more viable in my opinion so you can't lose enemies you can't lose corpses anymore so for me you know having that ability to be able to deal with a mob of enemies just by killing one of them and that explodes and all that extra damage and area damage is huge i run follow through so range sneak attacks increase damage to the target by 40% for 10 seconds. This is huge. We, we run a ranged 
effectively it's a sneak build, although I'm not running sneak perks, but we're aiming for sneak attacks. So follow through just makes sense. And then I'll run max ranking funky duds. You do not need to run max rank in this card. I just have max rank in this card because I've got no, no other cards that I can use as part of this build. So, uh, oh sorry, the only other card that I use as part of this build is Ammo Factory. So you'll see here that I have I have max rank in Ammo Factory as well for when I want to uh, craft some ammo. And that is that. So, uh, sorry, Funky Duds gives you plus 200% poison damage resistance when you're wearing a matching set of armor. So I, I have a full set of uh, Secret Service armor, which I'll go through in just a moment. And so that gives me 200 poison resistance, which can save you at times, you know. Poison resistance can be an absolute pain in the arse in this game. And just having that extra bit of resistance can really save you. Okay, so moving on to my armor. Like I said, I'll run a full set of Secret Service armor and it's all unyielding. Some of the pieces are very good, like this piece. Some of the pieces are not so good. I am working on re-rolling them, but you know how it is with... Uh, rolling legendaries in this game so this piece has 5% AP regen and 75% chance to reduce damage while not moving and I run the buttressed mod which gives you the most damage you should always run buttressed on your secret service armor and then the lining it's entirely up to you on what you want to run I use asbestos lining purely because it makes you immune from being set on fire um, which means that you can't die from the falling embers at Earl and that's about it I, I don't need the dense chest piece because of uh, I run fireproof and then I don't really want to use a jetpack because that just burns huge amounts of AP so I run the asbestos lining and I just have the uh, camo secret service paint on it uh, moving on to the left arm again this is a really good piece 5% AP regen 75% chance to reduce damage while not moving I run buttress mud again ultralight build for more action points left leg this is average not the best 25% rad resist 25% less noise while sneaking and 25% reduced detection chance uh, again buttressed ultralight build for the AP the right arm is 25% uh, reduced disease chance from environmental hazards food or drink and chem weights are reduced by 20% that's quite nice we use quite a lot of food and chems and stuff on this build so that's quite a nice little effect to have but the 25% reduced disease chances it's not very good. It's not very good. Again, we run buttressed and ultralight build for the increased AP. And then my right leg is just plus one strength and 15% less limb damage taken. Again, with buttressed and ultralight build. So this right leg and right arm, these are two pieces that I am looking at re-rolling. Okay? I have an armor plated backpack, but I tend not to use it unless I'm maybe fighting a boss. But nine times out of ten, I run high capacity. I run high capacity okay yeah so i'm using the shielded flannel shirt and jeans but i also use the well I, I normally use the shielded road leathers i only have the shielded flannel shirt and jeans equipped because of the increased intelligence when double xp was on and i just forgot to swap them out and then for my apparel i'll just wear the elders battle coat i think it's a really cool outfit i haven't i've got i've got rare outfits in the game you know i've got the tat field jacket and all that sort of stuff but i just don't find them particularly sort of interesting to look at whereas i quite like the look of the uh the elders battle coat and then moving on to my weapons guys so i have i have some decent stuff and i have some not so decent stuff okay i use i occasionally use this bloody 10 mil pistol which has a 50 percent chance to hit a target in vats and reload speed this is this is rare that i use this in all honesty this isn't my go-to weapon um my main go-to weapon is this which is a bloody explosive faster reload 10 millimeter pistol and it has the tweaked automatic receiver the aligned long barrel the forceful grip the perforating magazine the reflex sight suppressor and the gilded paint so those are the best attachments that you can use on a 10 mil pistol i did make a youtube short all about it and why you should use each um each attachment and what they do so this is my main sort of go-to weapon of choice uh i rolled this not so long ago on a stream and i was absolutely buzzing when i got it it's an absolute god roll and it's really really good i also use this quad explosive 50 dr while aiming it's not too bad it's not too bad so quad and bloody are my main go-to weapons on this build with these uh 10 mil pistols here i use exactly the same attachments the tweak torque mate receiver the aligned long barrel forceful grip perforating mag reflex sight suppressor gilded paint um, 
Again, it's another nice 10 mil pistol, uh, but I tend to use the bloodied more than this. And then I also have a quad. It's only got bash damage, but it has less VATS cost, which is huge. The VATS cost is massive. So the VATS cost on this with the less VATS cost is only four points per shot. On a normal one, it's nine. So it's, it's more than half the cost per shot. So when you think about how fast you're firing and half the cost, massive massive so yeah so this and the bloody explosive faster reload are probably my main go-to guns on this build and uh yeah that i think oh no we need to look at some mutations so let's take a look at some mutations that i run so i run adrenal reaction for increased weapon damage at low health you do get a detrimental effect of minus 50 hp but that doesn't matter i run bird bones you get a detrimental effect of minus four strength, but you get increased, uh, sorry, you get reduced full speed and plus four agility. The agility gives you more AP, which is obviously good. Or an eagle eyes, less strength, but this build this build isn't based around strength, so that doesn't matter. You get more perception, which obviously benefits us, and more crit damage, which hugely benefits us. I run egghead purely for the extra intelligence. I'm not bothered about the uh, less endurance points and less strength points. I run grounded um, purely because I don't run energy guns, but an extra hundred extra hundred energy resistance is just it's just nice to have. Herbivore because all the food buffs that benefit this kind of build all come from fruits and vegetables, okay? And you get twice the benefits from those uh, fruits and vegetables as well. Marsupial for increased jump height. I do suffer minus four intelligence, but when I'm running xp and stuff all i'll do is just pop another marsupial serum and that detrimental effect of minus four intelligence goes away and we get an extra 20 carry weight as well which is always nice and then speed demon so your hunger and thirst increases by 50 percent while you're moving but you get faster reload speed and your movement speed is much faster as well and then do you remember i was saying about uh rejuvenated offering me more benefits from being well fed and well hydrated so it you can see there I'm gaining 45% more HP plus one strength and my disease resistance is up by 45% for being well fed. And then for being well hydrated, I get an increase of 25% action point regeneration and 25% extra disease resistance. Okay, so let's talk about a little bit about the buffs that I use. So I run Ballistic Bok, which means that my Ballistic Weapon damage is increased by 15%, but it does increase the condition cost of your weapon as well for, by 15%. I mean, for me, 15% increased weapon damage, uh, weapon cost, like condition, doesn't matter, uh, but that extra damage can be huge. I run Blight Soup for 100% more critical damage. This is massive, massive, and you should always run this. Uh, I run Carrot Soup, which just gives you more perception. Um, it's really good, just extra perception, you know, nothing wrong with extra perception. And then I'll run corn soup for faster AP regen. And that's all that is. And then into my aid, um, I run, where are we? So small guns bobblehead for more damage. Um, if I'm stacking for um, XP and stuff, I'll run leaders. But I always run small guns if I'm uh, just out doing damage. And then guns and bullets 3 magazine, um, just extra crit damage which is huge. Um, I don't have the Live and Love magazine that increases your benefits from fruits and vegetables. Um, I think it's Live and... Is it Live and Love 3? I can't remember which one it is, but you should use that over this Guns and Bullets 3 magazine if you have it, um, because you get more, much more benefit from the fruits and vegetables, so that Blight Soup and stuff becomes insanely powerful. Um, I run Overdrive uh, for 15% more damage and 30% more critical damage. For three minutes but because we run chem fiend we get longer duration of that chem and then i run psycho tax as well giving us 25 percent more damage and 15 percent more damage resistance and three perception again we get more uh, duration with that because of the chem fiend perk okay so here you can see all my buffs stacked in my pit boy so we have ballistic bock active we have small guns bobble the guns and bullets three magazine we have Overdrive, Psycho Tats, Blight Soup, Carrot Soup, Corn Soup, all working well. Uh, we're fully fed, fully hydrated. We've got a perfect bubblegum active, meaning our thirst and hunger will not decrease. So we are all set and ready to go. So let's go and test this build out. Okay, so we've come to Solomon's Pond and we're going to test this build out on this uh, level 100 glowing behemoth so you can see right there he's level 100 glowing behemoth and let's see how we get on 
So you can see there when the clip ran out. Now, if I'd had a quick hands proc, I would have had an instant reload. But as you can say, we made really quick work of uh, this level 100 glowing behemoth. Okay, now let's go and test this build out on some good old super mutants at the good old West Tech. So you can see it, we are making really short work of these uh, super mutants. And, and let me just switch to the uh, quad and you can see that that will work just as well. I'll use the, I'll use the quad with less fats cost and you'll be able to see that that will work uh, really, really well as well. There's somebody still alive. There you are. Okay, so as you can see there, we made really short work of them. Okay, guys, so are you convinced yet that you need a 10 mil pistol build in your life? Because I think you should be by now. I was I was never convinced by 10 mil pistols, right? And then... I I just thought to myself, you know what? I've got a commando build. They use roughly the same sort of perks. I'm just going to work on it, and I'm just going to see what it's like. And I'll tell you what, I'm 100% sold. It's one of my favourite builds to run right now. And if you want to if you want to see it working 100% live in action, you can come and check out my live streams and stuff. So subscribe to the channel if you want to see them. And if there's Changes and things you think you think that I should make to this build, let me know in the comments. But I think this build is pretty optimized and about as good as it can get. Also, just want to say a quick thank you to all my channel members: FST, Vampire Lord, Unuseti, Ben Salami, Dave, Kasane, Justin, Robert, The Endless Chapter, Tressler, Barista and Selmy, Riley Taylor, Steph R, Pat Stone, X Lunch Lady, Andy D, Norse Demon, and Face Off 007. Your support is hugely appreciated. If you've enjoyed this video, guys, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff, and I'll see you guys all next time. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.